dark here. So why don't I take out some of my Payne's Grey. This is a good dark colour. You'll see what this will do. Now, I don't like just using black. I think it's an awful colour. So what I normally do is I mix some of my Payne's Grey with some of my alizarin crimson and a little bit of my blue, and I get a nice purple. You see, a dark purple colour, because I'm going to put in some trees and things. Now, I'm going to start over this side here. So let's do that. Look, with little dabblies and things. See that? These are little bushes that were at the side, the edge of the, the Grand Canyon. Could you imagine that place, yeah? The depth of it. Now, look right across. Just be careful. Don't go too, too near your sun. I'm just filling in where I think the edge should be, so to speak. Now, that's about it. Then we start working our way down, if you like. I think I should probably go up a little. Now, you see about that colour? It's a nice winey colour colour. It isn't a, a dreadful old black. Black is not a nice colour at all by itself. Never use it. No, 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 no. Tell you something. You know, why I used a coin there? Because, well, unfortunately, we're not great at drawing circles and squares and things. And I'm going to bet you something now. If you get a piece of paper, and you get a pencil, and if you draw a square, just an ordinary square, freehand, just a square for me, right? I will bet you the chances are it'll be too tall. It certainly will not be a square. Most people draw them too tall. You might be the exception to the rule. Try it sometime. You'd be surprised. That's why when we're drawing houses and things, we, we make a cottage look like a three-story house, because it's way up in the air. Now I'm mixing some more of this stuff here, coming on down on this side here. Look, get lovely colours in there. Don't be afraid to... See the nice purples and blues are all... And this is all done with the corner of the large brush. And just take your time. Don't go bizarre. If you try to fill this all in at high speed, what would happen is you'll just get straight lines of just colour, and it would look awful. Now a little red there. Yes. Because I'm going to darken this. This is only the first coat, as they say. We've got bits of it that will be lightened and bits of it will be darkened. You'll see as we go along. Now, what I'm going to do now is give that another bit of a dry because I don't want to be putting my hand in my own, my own paint, as they say. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Just a quick dry now. <sighs> Okie dokie. There we go. Now we're going to... We're working, actually, with what would be called, uh, technically, warm colours. You know what they mean. Well, well, it makes a lot of common sense, kind of. Reds are warm, and orange is the warmest colour of all. Would you believe that? And, of course, what would cool colours be? The opposite, blue. Blue is... So we're mixing... Well, we're making it purpley, you see, so we're taking the coldness out of it, if you like. So if you ever read an instruction manual that says that somebody's working or you should work in cool colours or warm colours. That's what it means. Nothing else. Orange is, the, is, is they say, the warmest colour of all. And that's why we try to create an orangey colour around here, because around the sun, naturally, it would be very warm, wouldn't it? Now, I've got to put some stuff up here. That's a little, a little hair there. We well, don't worry about it. Now, that's surprising about that old triangle, isn't it? Or the angle. The, ang the, the square that becomes a, a rectangle, yeah. There we go. You know, I was reading something the other day, <laughs> and they talked about the wild man from Borneo. You ever hear of the wild man? There's no such thing. There are no wild men in Borneo. They're only in a circus. Did you know that? They come up with these crazy notions, you know, like the... I suppose uh, somebody tells a story, and then it goes round in a circle, and by the time it gets back to the first fill again, it's a different tale altogether. <laughs> You can play a game, <laughs> get ten people around a circle, they tell the story, and it's repeated. Anyway, I'm just going to dabble this in here, give it a bit of a dry now, and then we're going to, you're going to head off and maybe have a look at the Grand Canyon. Why don't you do that? I'm going to give this a good dry now. <sighs> While I'm standing here, I'm walking along beside the rim of the Grand Canyon. And I don't like heights, so I'm not going to look down, but I'm going to tell you some facts about it. First of all, it is a mile deep. It is 10 miles wide. It's 277 miles long. 
It's 30 degrees warmer at the bottom than the top. It took six million years for it to be formed, which is not a long time really. And uh, if you want to walk to the bottom and then back up again, it could take you two days. The last thing, and I thought was quite funny, was the first man ever to come down the Colorado River on a raft was a guy called Powell. And he only had one arm. Anyway, now let's get back to our painting now. you're back. Well, let me tell you. First of all, do you know what I was asked to do there at the Grand Canyon? Get up on the back of a mule, I think that's what it's a mule or an ass, right? And, or a burrow, and go down the Grand Canyon with me sitting on this thing's back. And the pathway, it's a mile high, remember, is about two meters wide, six feet wide. And this, they wanted me, I said, no, thank you. I shall walk up I am not going down there on that thing. Would you go down it? Certainly not. You'd take a life in your hands. So if the poor old thing got a bit of a fright at all, the two you'd be over the side. Anyway, I didn't. But it is beautiful. It is. I mean, imagine being able to look down, almost vertically down a mile. We don't realise how high up it is. And 30 degrees difference. I can't, I can't understand that. You're roasting the thing. Anyway, let's get back to some of our painting here. But it was lovely. It was a little misty the day we were there. It wasn't at its very best, let's say. This is always the way. You know, there's a syndrome it's called Murphy's Law. Did you ever hear what Murphy's Law is? Well, Murphy's Law very clearly states that if a thing can go wrong, it will. And I'm making up some more purple. And in our case, what happened was, it was just a little misty for the day that was in it, as we say. But it was still beautiful. It was still, and this sunset was just gorgeous. Now, I'm going over some with slightly darker paint. Now, you can see what I'm at. Right across, I've got to put a big tree in here in a minute. There was a big bush. This was an area where it was just up from the hotel and it was kind of some trees and bushes and things. And I thought it was just magnificent when that sun started to set. Just wonderful. Now I'm right down to the bottom. Now let's get at this bit here. Anyway, if you ever get a chance, take that train ride as well. Terrific. And enjoy it. Now, I'm now mixing up some Payne's Grey some of the red and some of the blue together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant a couple of trees here. This will be a biggish kind of tree. I think I may have told you before, but I shall tell you again. Never make both sides of your picture look the same. What do I mean by that? If you have a bush on that side, don't do the very same thing on this side. Otherwise, it looks like you've almost folded the page in two and just, and just pressed one against the other and got a repeat of one side on the other. Now, this, of course, is only... What I'm doing here is only the skeleton of this thing. And it's done with the rigger brush, and you'll notice that as I lean heavily on it, it gets broader, and as I pick it up, it gets thinner. So it works very simply for me. That's why each brush has its own job to do. And I'm hoping that you're sitting there now saying, hey, I can do this. This is so simple. If that's what I can do, it's so can I. Please, now. You have a go at this. Try it. It's very, very easy. Those of you who've tried to paint and have taken up the hobby will realise just how simple it really was once you know what you're doing. That's the only thing I have to say to you. So many of us, so many of us uh, really uh, we're told we can't paint and that's what happens. Now, okay. Next. I am going to now add in some dark leaves to this tree. It's a bush. It was an old bush that was sort of sitting on one side there. Now, a mixture of large brush, red and blue, and some of the Payne's Grey. 